everyone and welcome to my channel. Today I'm inviting you sitting in front of the camera. It's not what I'm usually doing. For those who are following my videos, you know that I'm usually showing something behind the camera. And for those who are new here, my name is Yolita Bartkus. I'm showing how to arrange the space, how to better organize the space. And uh, this is what my usual content is about. But few days ago, it was one year for me on YouTube and I promised my viewers that I will make a Q&A video. Today with pleasure I will answer your questions and of course thank you very much for your support, for your wonderful comments. You have been such a big motivation for me to continue and also I would like to thank my Lithuanian viewers. And today I probably will try a little bit to tell about myself and to answer your questions. Milan Mo is writing, I hope that I'm pronouncing your name correctly. I'd like to know what inspired you to start your channel. I'd also be interested to know what a typical lunch or dinner consists of for you. And if you have another job outside the home or is keeping your lovely home your job. I guess you probably noticed uh, more new YouTubers appearing in 2020. I guess the people, because of pandemic, uh, right at the sudden got more time because they spend all the time at home and uh, the hours like for instance we we are living from my husband's income my husband Christian is a classical pianist and he's also teaching uh, piano at the school and we were afraid that uh, it might be that he was not going to have a client and uh, I thought, I, I guess I have this uh, ability to, to arrange home beautiful and uh, I could show to somebody else and maybe somebody else could be also inspired and they could learn something from me and if I can also earn. <laughs> that was the beginning. Are you also asking what uh, is our typical lunch or dinner? So I would say definitely dinner. And uh, we're eating usually around 8 p.m. It's not very healthy, I know, but it depends when my husband is finishing his work. And so the most of times so I'm probably eating fish. And in the summer I'm preparing a lot of salad. If I have another job, if I have a real job, no, I'm not working here in Luxembourg. Uh, but I was working before I arrived to Luxembourg. I was working as a social worker and um, we have some kind of manpower uh, which belongs to state uh, in Lithuania and I was working there as a project coordinator or project manager if you like. I worked in the bank, I worked in the education center, I was actually the deputy director. But when I arrived to Luxembourg, um, I'm not working. Um, Ihong Tsang is asking, sorry if I didn't pronounce your name correctly, do you have art background? What do you do at this at your spare time? What inspire your creativity? And uh, also Nick Pep asking, do you have art studies and what are my hobbies? No, I haven't art studies. I've been always creative. As much I remember myself, I was always something crafting. I had always ideas how to do it better, not necessarily better, but how to do it different. I grew up in the Soviet Union, so uh, I don't know what you know about it, but we had luck or deficit yeah, in everything, so they were not so that literary, nothing, but not necessarily what you need. And so we had to create something from nothing, so this, this, this makes you also very creative. I, I remember my father, when he wanted to create something, sometimes he, he needed to create the tool before he created something. And now I think that uh, we have so many examples, we have the Pinterest and uh, I'm finding a lot of inspirations there and of course when the times when we could travel we're always picking up what the other people are doing. Yeah, just look around and, and you will find. Yeah, but when we had a spare time we used to like to go somewhere for one day. We like to hike when it's a good weather. 
And we have very, very beautiful promenade along the river and we have the vineyards all over around. So we're doing hiking. I like to sing. Um, I'm singing in choir and um, I like to read. So those are the things what I'm doing in my spare time. Suli take you for. My question would be how you as a Lithuanian ended up in Luxembourg and is your husband Lithuanian too? What languages do you speak? Also, I'm not sure what your profession is. I it very, very simple in Luxembourg. My husband to be had a work here and we've been on the distant relationship for five years. Either we needed to begin already to live together, we had to part. So my husband finally uh, rented some little flat here. So I followed my heart. Is my husband Lithuanian? No, he isn't Lithuanian. He's very mixed and feels himself pure European. What languages do you speak? Lithuanian, it's my native language, it's my mother tongue. I grew up in the Soviet Union, so we were obliged to learn Russian language. I'm understanding very well Polish because we had occasion to watch Polish TV. I'm speaking also English. I guess I'm speaking English. And uh, I also learned it at school. Luxembourg has three state languages. This is Luxembourgish, German and French. So I'm speaking Luxembourgish, I went to school. I'm speaking German and German I learned myself. I just wrapped it from the air. Uh, I guess probably I'm talented. I began to learn French. I can understand something, not everything. I would say I'm speaking six languages and a little bit French. I'm not sure what your profession is. I studied social work, so I have the profession of social worker. I was continuing to study social pedagogy and psychology, and so on. I'm social pedagogue with the direction to psychology. Jay Belbert is writing. Do you have people watching from all over the world? Have you traveled outside of Europe? Yes, I, I do have people are watching really many places it's 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 overwhelming because my video analytics telling that top geographies are united states india uk philippines and germany and uh, many viewers in canada and uh, i'm getting comments from argentina from brazil uh, as they saw in that video analytics, there are some 44 countries listed. The geography is really, really overwhelming and it's all around the globe and it's really very crazy. Have you traveled outside of Europe? No, we never traveled outside of Europe, sadly. I said I turned 50 last year. We planned several weeks in Australia and stopping in the Singapore. But as you probably remember, in the end of 2019, there were very, very big wild forest fires in Australia and it continued in the beginning of 2020. And then pandemic began, so... M. Harris is writing, uh, I would like to know if you play the piano too, or perhaps another instrument. No, I am not playing piano. As a child, I was attending music classes for some Lithuanian folk instrument. It was like a like trapeze box with a cavity inside and it had some strings over it and you would be playing uh, either like this or you would have some like a guitar pick and playing like that. And it, this instrument I learned to play for two years and after I quit because I, I, I didn't like it. And I also attended some singing classes here as an adult here in Luxembourg. I was attending for six years opera singing class. Uh, I didn't become an opera singer, but I'm singing in the choir. The voice is my instrument, if I can tell so. Also, do you knit? Yes, I am a knitter, but a seasonal one, which means that I'm knitting only in the cold period of year. Domicia de Valetpin is asking, in which other country would you like to live if you had the choice? It's a difficult question, I think, but um, I think I would like to live near the sea, the 
Actually, Luxembourg is a very good country to live, it's very secure, the social system is good, but the sea is the, the thing what is missing. So I don't know some country with good social system, secure and with the sea, that would be wonderful. Natasha, mom turned minimalist, uh, asking me what made you want to embrace minimalism? Did you have a tipping point? Well, if I tell that I didn't become a minimalist, that I guess I've always been a minimalist when I'm looking back to my past, I said already a couple of times when I grew up in the Soviet Union where we had very big deficit in everything which means that I maybe had two pairs of shoes for the season and uh, because simply uh, I couldn't go, you couldn't get to the shop like now I'm thinking I don't like this style and I don't like the color and I don't like the, the maybe heel or, or, or I don't know what we bought what we could find and I'm thinking one way we were a minimalist because we had not many things on the other hand we were probably the hoarders because um, I remember I was a kid, but I walked with my mom and we would be seeing some people queuing. We would be stopped at this queue and we would be waiting for several hours even though we wouldn't know what they are selling. I, I remember that we had enormous amount of the beddings. It was really packed to the brim in the wardrobe and uh, there were not possible to use for one generation they were definitely bought for several generations because people knew that if they are not buying now the next day there will be no no things if you remember the beginning of the pandemic when the people were buying everything and they were in some shops in some shops there were empty uh, shelves so this I saw like a déjà vu from my uh, childhood, from the times when I grew up. So you cannot not become a minimalist if you have nothing. So and then it was some ups and downs. And uh, when I moved here, I remember we were invited to some wedding, and the animator asked the women that they would raise their hand who have more than twenty pairs of shoes. And I looked left and right and almost all hands were up and I had just six pairs of shoes and I thought, oh, I have to do something. So I began to, to, to collect more things and uh, to buy more things and not necessarily the best quality, it was just a quantity. And then right of the sudden I, I thought I have to stop doing this because the first thing we um, lived in very small place, the second we had no money. And, uh, and I didn't want, want it to wear it, so yeah, that's probably the tipping point that you, you don't use the things and you have a place where to store and you don't have any purpose. Diane Bilato Claudino is asking why Luxembourg? Uh, why the Luxembourg? I, I, I think I already answered. I followed my husband-to-be. Uh, what happened for you to understand that you wanted to be a minimalist? Please don't say it was due to the environment. Actually, I was told I am minimalist. I, I was never thinking that I am. Uh, I didn't try to compare very much myself with the others because I, I, I think I'm a little bit too proud. We try to have uh, enough and to, to have the things what we are really using, what we have, what have a purpose in our life and once I, I don't remember when it was but uh, I remember that it was that I decided to get just practical things or beautiful things. I guess it's um, the minimalism in me is more that I like to have it simple, I like to have a very good overview. I, probably my understanding that I wanted to be a minimalist, I, I don't know whether it was a big, big wish to become a minimalist. And Nomus Zama is asking, once again, sorry if I didn't pronounce it correctly. What type of camera, equipment, lighting and editing app are you using for your videos? And uh, Rachel PP1 uh, writes that she has the same questions. Until mid-February, I filmed all my videos on Samsung Galaxy 10s Plus smartphone and I'm really impressed with its camera capacities. 
for almost one year I used the paid version of UCAD Pro video editing app. It's quite simple to use and I really like it except for the display size. For the voiceovers I've got a video microphone from Rode. I also have two tripods bought from Leo Photo. They are made of carbon fiber, very sturdy and also lightweight. I like them very much. I'm also using video light flute head from Manfrotto. The most of time I'm actually filming in the natural light, but for some emergencies I got newer 18 inches ring light. Recently I invested into, I guess, one of the most popular camera among YouTubers, Sony Alpha 7 III. We've two the most popular lenses and I'm still in the learning process. And I'm also using Final Cut Pro on my Mac all in one. A.D. Tucker is writing, quite a few hardcore minimalists seem to live alone, which makes being strict in routines and habits maybe a bit simpler. I'm curious about what choices are affected by living with another who may or may not share your values as a minimalist. I guess that extreme minimalist with two shirts and one pant has the other name. I'm really not interested in this. And uh, this um, hardcore minimalist, I don't know, It was. Uh, it's very interesting that before it was like a competition who, who can afford more and now it's like a competition who will have less and I, I a little bit sometimes confuse how the other minimalists less they have more they pushing the others to the to the corners and uh, like they would need more space for their minimalism and uh, this is definitely not me for me it's the most important that life is simple and I have the overview and how is to live with somebody else. Uh, well, my husband is very, very good in the reducing the things because we rather reducing or replacing than adding something. Connie Martinez is asking, can you share the places you have traveled to and which one has been the best? As I said in previous question, we didn't leave the Europe and most of the time we've been traveling around here. I would say I love the most two places where I have been. It's an isle of Gotland in Baltic Sea, it belongs to Sweden, because of incredibly beautiful nature, clear air and the sea. And the other one is Lisbon, because of incredible light, all architecture and also some sadness in the air. So I guess that's it for today. I was really, really very excited about doing this video. It was probably the most difficult uh, video what I ever did. I hope now that you know me a little bit better. Uh, I hope that I answered all your questions. If you still have some questions, please feel free to write me a comment. I'm always very, very happy and excited about your comments. They are so positive and so sweet. And if you like this video, please give me the thumbs up and smash the subscribing button. Thanks for watching. Greetings from Luxembourg. And see you in the next one. Adios.